Hello everybody and welcome to another one of our leadership training videos. As you may know by now in these uh, leadership training videos, what I do is I spend time, a few minutes, just explaining to you what the key traits of leadership are, how to become a more effective leader, how to become a more skillful leader, what the tools are that you need in order to become even better as a leader. But don't worry, if you're not a leader yet, it's still about how you become a leader. What are the key building blocks and steps that you need to become a leader? So welcome once again. Feel free to like, share, comment on this video. And of course, I'd love to hear more about what you're doing in your leadership journey in order to become even better than you are. Now today, it's my privilege to talk about a particular subject, which I've had many questions and comments on. People have said to me, what are the core or key leadership secrets that I need to know about to become a better leader? So first of all, thank you all for those private messages and comments and thoughts that you've given me. So I'm going to explore a few of them right now. Now, for those who don't know me, my name is Chris Igwe. I have over 35 years experience of leading, growing and developing teams across five major markets where I have lived and worked, and more importantly, across Europe, Middle East and Africa. It's my privilege to share some of these insights with you. So, the question that was asked of me is to delve into what the secrets are of leadership, what the secrets are of becoming, becoming a leader or even becoming a better or great leader. Now, inevitably, what I'm going to say to you will come as no surprise. There is a lot out there on leadership and on leadership skills. But as it relates to me, I'm going to break it down into just an overview initially to give you some thoughts about this idea of leadership. The first is, I don't believe that there are any secrets as such which should not or cannot be shared. So you may ask about leadership secrets. Yes, there are many if you don't know or are not familiar with leadership, but I'm not sure that there are no secrets to be shared because what I'm doing in these leadership training videos is sharing with you the experiences that I've had, which have all become learnings. Because I think that's the important part about leadership. It's about learning all the time. If, like me, you've had the chance to become a global thought leader and a leader in your own field, then it's as a result of all the things that I've learned over time and that I'm still learning. But it also comes out of these things. So when you talk about me, as in Chris Igwe, my story is going to be different from yours. My story is going to be different from somebody else that you may know who is a leader. So you have to look at the story in the context of how it relates to your life and your journey and how it related to mine as I made this particular journey. The other aspect of secrets is that it comes through experiences. My experiences will be very different from anybody else's. But the idea about these videos is that you take my experiences, relate them to yours and see how you can improve in your world, in your area, in your sector, in your geography. And of course, it's about my successes, but also, and perhaps equally importantly as a leader, it's about my failures. Where have I failed? What have I failed at? And how did those failures turn into success? How did those failures through the experiences enhance my story and most importantly, my learnings. So I guess the first thing as I do this introduction for you is to say, there are no secrets because there is no single secret, but there are opportunities to learn from other people such as myself. And that's what we're gonna be doing today for this short time we are together. So if I do break it down into what I see as the secrets if you like, it starts with these. And I'm gonna take you through each of them and just explain a little bit about what I'm thinking and saying. So the very first thing is, and I've put it up there, because it's hard work. You don't get to be a leader, let alone a good or a great leader or an outstanding leader, whatever level you want to put it at, without hard work. Whoever you want to look at as a leader today I have no doubt that if you looked for a moment and just spent some time thinking about it, you'd discover that that person put an incredible amount of hard work. Let's take the topic of today. We know that 
Germany has been to the polls and they have been electing their new chancellor. Angela Merkel has been the chancellor for the last 16 years. And it will come as no surprise to you because you may have seen her on the television or anywhere else. But 16 years is a long time to be in power. 16 years is a long time to lead a company or a country, wherever you are. And added to that being a woman. It's amazing what she has achieved, but hard work. She's worked incredibly hard. I'm not talking about politics here, so don't get me wrong. This is not about politics. This is about leadership. And any leader, and I've had that experience, has to work incredibly hard. All the things that I've achieved, both by failures and my successes, have been through incredible hard work. I have traveled the world, literally. I've worked three or four days on the road, which my family has put up with all this time. I've worked on huge international projects. I've worked on complex projects in companies. I've led and re-established and restructured businesses all through hard work. So if you're in any doubt, that is the very first thing I'm saying to you, is that there is no quick road. It is all about hard work and putting the energy in. The second one is asking questions. And in a separate video, you may have uh, looked at that leadership training video, I talked about asking great questions. Because by asking questions, let alone good or great questions, it gives you the chance to get underneath the skin of what is being said, and more importantly, what is not said. So what I did say is, for example, if you ask a question, let's say it's Monday, you've come into the office, you say, hi Jane, how was your weekend? You don't want it to be a closed answer. You don't want her to say, great, fine, fabulous. Why don't you ask the question a different way? Say, look, I know that you've got you know two young boys. I imagine they're incredibly busy, boisterous, kept you going the whole weekend. So tell me what you did over the weekend or what are a couple of things that you did that maybe they hadn't done before. Open the conversation. If you're wanting in a work environment, you're looking at the project. There's a project that somebody is working on in your team. Instead of saying, is the project going well? In which case the answer is likely to be yes or no, probably. Or they might say a few problems, but we're working through it. Why don't you ask a different question and say, hey Joe, um, that project that you've been working on for a few weeks now, um, I imagine and I hope it's going well, but there was one particular aspect I wanted to know about. You know, that process, uh, explain to me what you've discovered so far or how that might help to improve our business or whatever. That's a question that Joe can answer in a more complete manner than just giving you a yes or no answer. So ask great questions. Be curious. As leaders, it's very often, you might have heard this phrase, stay in your lane. I don't believe you should stay in your lane in anything. Obviously go where you're passionate, you're interested, but don't stay in your lane. When I moved from civil engineering and worked on a major international project, moving into retail, I moved to Foot Locker, a global brand in the athletic footwear world. I knew nothing about retail, knew nothing about real estate. Not only did I have to learn, so I, there was automatic curiosity, but I was keen to know how the whole spectrum of the business worked. So instead of just focusing on real estate, I wanted to understand how the sales director works and thinks, how the merchandising director operates, what the finance director needs, and so on and so forth. I went into all sorts of different areas, and you know what? It stood me in good stead for the next stage in my career, where I was hired on the basis that I knew more about real estate and retail real estate than most retail real estate people, because they just know in a silo about leases, lease contracts, transactions, and so on. So on the one hand, I wanted to learn but I also wanted to understand more about the overall business. But be curious, ask questions and keep asking questions. A key fundamental, seek to understand before you are understood. In other words, those who you are leading in your team, what is it that motivates them? What drives them? What are their ambitions? What are their expectations? What are their dreams? What are their hopes? Look to discover all those, which could come through asking questions, of course but you want to be understanding them. And once you understand them, they will seek to understand you because it shows that you are taking an interest in them. Another very important point, be patient. 
be patient with yourself. One of my famous phrases in quotes, which comes out of a poem which I love is, beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. Be patient. Leading successfully takes time because you have to bring people with you. So this mentality we have today of everything right away, everything straight away, it's not gonna happen. And to be honest, if you do that, you'll have more failures than you do successes. A few other important points. Set the pace. Remember, you are the leader in anything that you do as a leader, especially when you set up the strategy, the vision, the expectation, how to manage the team, drive the team, build the team, give them the tools that they need and so on. You set the pace. And set the pace means, imagine as I was for a long time, a high performing athlete. Not that I liked the middle distance running, I was more of a sprinter, so 100 meters, 200 meters, I enjoyed that, and high jump, long jump, etc. But if you are doing, let's say, maybe the 800 meters, but certainly the 1500 meters, the 3000, the 5000, the 10,000, or indeed the marathon, you would often have somebody who starts out and sets the pace. Now, maybe that person wins at the end, and that's great. But the point is the pace is set. You don't go like charging as a sprinter and say, I'm gonna get this done in, in a month or in 10 months when it might take much longer. But you set the pace that everybody else is going to perform at. And by setting the pace, you may be at front in the front or you may be behind. For the purposes of this, it doesn't really matter. It's the fact that you set the pace and you put the milestones so people know where they need to get to and by when. A couple of really important aspects which are intertwined, mindset. Now a leader has to have the right kind of mindset. And a few things in mindset. So mindset is about your mind being properly founded, grounded and established. And how do you do that? Well, on the one hand, you've got to have the right attitude, a positive attitude. You've got to have habits things that you do on a regular basis in a sequential manner which allow you to improve yourself. So you've got to have habits. You've got to have willpower. The willpower to push through, drive through, work through, especially when you're down or you're failing or there are failures. So mindset is about getting your mind absolutely clear and to get it disciplined as well so that you are in control of what your thoughts, in fact, what you think which are positive, powerful, engaging, embracing. That is an aspect of mindset and you need to have a very clear and strong mindset. Mental toughness is so important as well. And mental toughness is as much about not just your mental aspect, but it's about how you put in place processes, systems in order to achieve the relevant outcome that you want. So, Mental toughness is also, yes, it's about the willpower, it's about attitude, it's about discipline, but it's about how you go about things sequentially through a process, working through issues. So when everything is thrown at you and everything seems to be falling apart, yes, mindset counts, but mental toughness is like, okay, I need to gather my thoughts. This is the way that I'm gonna do it. So you put together a process and a plan to bring you out the other side. And of course, when the going gets tough and rough, your mental toughness, your mind, your attitude. Again, in, in high-performing athletes, wherever they are, whatever field they're in, it's about that incredible nothing will get past them if they don't want it in their space. Nothing will prevent them from getting where they want to be because they just have that absolute mindset. They see it in their minds. They know what they want. They know how to achieve it, and they're going to go through it. That's mental toughness. The last couple of things very quickly, show that you care. We all need love and attention. And I know that there are leaders out there who they have a more dictatorial approach. They have a more, I'm the boss and you're not. And trust me, which is why I talk about the five countries I've worked in across and also across Europe, Middle East and Africa. I've seen and worked in cultures where it's hierarchical. So in theory, 
You're not supposed to show that you care. You are the boss and you are taken as the boss and seen as the boss, whatever happens. But it's beyond that because if you want to engage them in a positive manner to have the outcome that you want, you have to show them that you care. And that's what I've brought in those cultures and people have appreciated it. And we've remained friends, colleagues, whatever, for a long, long time. So show your team, your company, your department that you care because we all need to be cared for. Caring is really the essential part of leadership. It's not just about leading people, it's about showing people that you care so that they can become even better and greater and achieve amazing heights. The final one, love what you do. If you're a leader and you're in a field that quite frankly, you're not enjoying it, yes, you'll be a good enough leader, but you won't be a great or outstanding leader. You have to lead from a place of, I love what I'm doing. I get up every morning and I'm privileged to be in this company, this business, this activity, this project, living in this country, whatever it happens to be. Love what you do and love it passionately because the more passion and drive and energy you give to it, the more successful you're going to be. So I certainly hope that that has given you some thoughts and ideas about those non-secrets as it were, but those are my learnings and experiences and there are many trust me that's that's only the tip of the iceberg but we don't have time nor would you want to hear all of them necessarily so if you can take a few of those even one and just work on one or two it doesn't matter if you're like me i would work on all of them because that's the kind of person i am i want to be the best at the game whatever game i'm playing so i hope that some of those have sparked thoughts interests and ideas and i would encourage you to embrace them but like I said at the beginning, put them into your story, your experiences, and make them your own and make them even better. So hopefully you've liked, loved, or enjoyed this particular leadership training program, in which case I would invite you to leave a comment, share, and of course, subscribe to the channel so you know when the next videos are coming up. In the meantime, I wish you a lot of success in your leadership journey. Thank you.